Hello guys welcome to MJ School of Mining and Geology YouTube channel. Please subscribe, like, share and comment to show support and appreciation. Did you know that the world's greatest deposit of gold is hosted by the Archean Witwatersrand Sedimentary Basin, situated in the central portion of the Kopval Kraton of South Africa? This remarkable clastic sedimentary deposit has yielded more than one-third of all the gold ever produced on the planet. The Witwatersrand Basin formed over a period of 360 million years between 3074 and 2714 million years. In the Witwatersrand Basin, there are three major theories such as placer model, hydrothermal model and the hybrid model which all attempt to account for the origin of gold and uranium in the Witwatersrand Basin. The placer model holds that gold was eroded from a pre-existing source and transported into the basin with other sediments forming the conglomerate strata. Wind and wave action further concentrated the gold near an ancient shoreline. In the placer model the gold was mineralized before it was deposited in the basin sediments. The source of the huge amount of gold and uranium along with detrital heavy minerals in the Witwatersrand is thought to be the entire greenstone-dominated Archean cratonic surface. This greenstone-dominated Archean cratonic surface was subjected to intensive chemical weathering permitting large-scale leaching of gold by surface waters and subsequently deposited as detrital grains in conglomerates. The source of the gold was in ultramafic and mafic igneous rocks of Archean greenstone belts older than 3,250 million years, while the uranium was drawn from the granites which intruded the greenstones between 3050 and 3200 million years ago. The mineralization is the response of sedimentary processes. Evidence of this model is zircon and chromite which are the most abundant heavy minerals to have been concentrated in the Witwatersrand conglomerate reefs. Meaning, their presence implies the existence of both felsic and mafic and ultramafic rocks in the source area. The source of the two minerals is usually from igneous rocks. Another evidence is uranite grains in the mineralized arenaceous horizons have given an age of 3,040 plus or minus 100 million years, and monazite grains, an age of 3,160 plus or minus 100 million years. Both of these ages are older than that of the lowermost members of the Witwatersrand succession, pointing to the fact that these minerals are of a detrital origin, and are not the products of epigenetic mineralization of the sediments. There are problems with the placer model. This include the absence of iron-titanium oxides but abundance of pyrite, unusual sulfide assemblage, detrital components, and the source of the gold. Moreover, the placer model fails to predict the distribution of mineralization in the footwall, apparent structural control on gold, and basic chemical associations that characterize the ore sweet. The hydrothermal model argues that hot fluids from deep within the Earth's crust carried the gold along faults and fractures within the basin conglomerates long after they were consolidated into rock. In the hydrothermal model the gold was mineralized after the sediments were transformed into rocks. The scientists tested this model by directly dating the age of the gold and the conglomerate rock. The model suggests that the uranium and gold were deposited after conglomerate deposition and were introduced by hydrothermal fluids. They assume that gold was transported in solution from a source outside of the basin, with deposition occurring sometime between 2.7 and 2.0 billion years by metamorphic fluid circulation. Hydrothermal fluid flow is thought to be in small-scale structures along lithologic boundaries such as bedding planes. For hydrothermal model, the mineralization only introduced to host rocks immediately or long after deposition of central rand. The gold source is within or beneath the basin, introduced to current position after deposition of the host sediments. Gold is either from metamorphism of deeper parts of basin or from granites intruding around or under the basin. This gold is then transported as bisulfide complex in hot hydrothermal solutions, channeled along most porous beds or along bedding parallel thrust faults in most brittle rock. The gold is then deposited when hydrothermal fluids came into contact with carbon or iron oxides. The pyrite is derived from sulfidation of iron oxides during mineralization. The evidence of this model is the size of gold grains is out of hydraulic equivalent, most gold clearly crosscut sedimentary features on a microscale, there is a good correlation between hydrothermal alteration and gold mineralization. There is also evidence of bedding parallel metamorphic fluid flow. The amount of gold in the Witwatersrand Basin is 10 times greater than the amount of gold in any Archean Kraton anywhere else in the world and no evidence of several mega deposits in the sediment source area. Other similar basins are fractionally younger and relatively poorly mineralized, for instance, Elliott Lake, Yucabina, and Tarqua. The supporters of this model counter that conglomerates fracture more readily than other rocks under the stress of tectonic forces, and that the resulting cracks would therefore provide the best conduits for gold-bearing fluids. In this case, 
carbon and iron in the conglomerates change the local oxidation state of the fluid and act as precipitation sites, bringing the gold out of solution. Another interesting observation is that much of the pyrite is associated with the gold in the conglomerates, and some of the grains themselves are rounded. In hydrothermal model, dissolved sulfur in the hydrothermal fluids would react with rounded iron oxide mineral grains such as magnetite, replacing the oxygen in the minerals with sulfur, and creating rounded pyrite. Moreover, most supporters of this model dispute the existence of rounded gold grains. Thus, because observations such as these can accommodate both placer and hydrothermal methods, it is difficult to know which model has a strong case. The hybrid model suggests that both the placer and the hydrothermal model were associated with mineralization in the Witwatersrand. The model assumes most of the gold in the basin was ultimately detrital in origin, but with subsequent modification by metamorphic or hydrothermal fluids. Varying degrees of local mobilization and reprecipitation of gold have been used to explain the two distinct appearances of gold within the basin and can be related to the amount of inferred fluid to rock interaction. This was based on dating of both the detrital pyrite and the recrystallized pyrite. The detrital pyrite gave ages between 2950 and 300 million years, with much younger hydrothermal overgrowths between 2100 and 2020 million years. The evidence is that the gold has strong sedimentological control typical of modern placers and the gold is often associated with rounded pyrite grains and heavy minerals like zircon and chromite. In conclusion, the Witwatersrand Basin is a largely underground geological formation which surfaces in the Witwatersrand. It holds the world's largest known gold reserves and has produced over 40,000 tons of the gold. This represents about 22% of all the gold accounted for above the surface. Thank for joining us into this interesting topic. Until next time cheers.